So that's why one reason why Allah said fasting is for me alone because no one can see it. There's no riya. You can't show off with it. When it comes to prayer, you could extend your prayer, make it more beautiful. When it comes to sadaqah, you could give it in front of people and people see that and you could be showing off. But when it comes to fasting, this is not the case. The second, the second reason they bring, they say, in one of the riwayat, we heard that Allah will reward the actions that we do for His sake between 10 and 700. The least is 10, the maximum is 700 as in this hadith and other hadith similar to it. But then Allah says, and fasting is for me and I will reward it. Similar to the saying of Allah in the Quran, that He will reward the, the people who have patience. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حساب. In Surah Zumar, that Allah will reward the people who are patient in a way that you cannot imagine. It's unlimited. You can't count it. So all of the other deeds that we do, they have a specific reward that Allah has written down. But when it comes to fasting, then that reward is unlimited. Why? Because that depends on the sincerity of that fast. How that person behaves during that fast completely. So this is another difference. The reward for fasting is unlimited. Whereas the other deeds are limited. They are, they're somewhere between 10 and 700. Another reason they say that it differs from other actions. You won't be praised for fasting. You might be praised for other deeds, but you won't be praised for fasting. The fourth one is that the scholars say no other thing was worshipped with fasting except Allah. When they fasted, they fasted for Allah. The previous generations, the previous people, previous nations, when they fasted, they fasted for Allah, their God. They didn't fast for idols. They didn't leave their food and their desires for idols. So they say this is another difference. And then the final difference, the fifth and final point, is that when it comes to Yawm al Qiyamah, and we find a man will come Yawm al Qiyamah, and he has loads of good deeds. And then a person is brought whom he oppressed. So to make up for that oppression, some of his good deeds, once he can't handle any bad deeds, or if the person has no bad deeds for him to take, then he's given good deeds. The scholars say, this does not include fasting. Because Allah said, fasting is for me, and I will reward it. So when it comes to making up for the oppression that someone has done, fasting will never be taken away from a person and given to someone else. Now when we look at fasting itself, fasting is about restraining oneself from desires. Why is this? When one restrains himself from his desires, from his food and his drink, he's preparing himself to attain a much greater good. He's purifying himself and aiming at the utmost happiness to be with his Lord, to be connected with his Lord. He's accepting a method to purify himself so he can prepare himself to attain the utmost success, the utmost bliss. Not only this, when he's fasting, he knows that he has a choice. He's going to be fasting for a set period of time, from Fajr to Maghrib. And then he remembers all those people who have no choice. They don't even have enough to quench their thirst, let alone their hunger. They don't have clean water to drink. They have merely a morsel of flesh, every f a morsel of food every few days perhaps. So he remembers that. And he has empathy with them. And he does something about that. Then, at the same time, he remembers that the Prophet ﷺ said that shaitan runs through the, the body of the insan, the human being, just like blood runs through the body. In the shaitan yajri min al insan majaddam. Riwayah Bukhari and Muslim. He remembers that and then he remembers food and drink is what gets, gets blood into the body, increases the amount of blood, gets it flowing faster. When you're fasting, the heart starts beating more efficiently. So it doesn't pump so much blood and there's not so much around. And then you don't do so much either because you don't have that much strength either. So shaitan can't flow through your body because there are st still some jinn, some who want bad for you, not the major ones, the minor ones, they're still present.
but they can't flow through your body as they used to do because of that fasting. Why is fast, fasting itself, why is it so virtuous? Well, one of the things that we've kind of indicated already is that it, sec- it is a secret between the person who's fasting and his Lord. Further to that, you could say a point two to that, is that when it comes to fasting, fasting is meant to be for the sake of Allah. Someone can see that you're not actually eating or drinking openly. But can they see that you are fasting for the sake of Allah? No one can see that. Not even an angel could see that and witness it and write it down. That is something between you, private, between you and Allah. That is in your intention and no one can see that. No one can even know anything about it except Allah. So this is another thing that makes it so virtuous. And then as we said, it cuts off the avenues of shaitan. Shaitan comes to you through which means? Through desires and temptations. You've cut off this means. You've narrowed your veins down. You've narrowed, you've lessened the amount of blood in your body being pumped around. You've narrowed the place for shaitan to run. So what's happened? He can't tempt you as much. The desires are less because you have less energy as well. So all of that, to push it all away, to prepare you for the goodness that is available to you in Ramadan. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, the famous Hanbali scholar, he says, when it comes to fasting, <coughs> and it's similar to other deeds in Al-Islam, if we remember the hadith of Jibreel, famous hadith of Umar, radiallahu an, where Jibreel comes to him and explains to him Islam, Iman and Ihsan, and from this the scholars take that in this deen, in Islam, there are three different levels. You have your Islam, the basic level, the out- outward actions, then you have your Iman, that is a f- further level up, which is emanating from the heart, more submission from the heart. Not just of the limbs, but it's truly flowing from the heart out to the limbs. Then you have the highest, the highest level, which is Ihsan. This perfect, the highest pinnacle when it comes to worshipping Allah. Similarly is fasting. So he says, there's three types of fasting. There's a general fasting. A specific fasting, and then he says there's a most, the most specific of fasting. So he says that the general fasting is something known. You don't eat, you don't put things into your stomach or food and drink, and you stay away from your desires and relationships with your spouses, your, your wives. Then he says the specific fasting, the level you can say of Iman when it comes to that hadith of Jibreel, when it comes to that, this is fasting that encompasses the tongue, the hands, the feet. Everything in the whole body stays away from the sins. Every type of sin it stays away from. This is the whole body fasting because it emanates from the heart. That Iman in Allah is more present in this person. The other one, the one before him, he was just fasting the normal fast that you can see. This other one has moved up a level. He's totally conscious of Allah. Totally, totally conscious so that his sit limbs, all and every single one of them, tongue, hands, eyes, ears, all they do is serve Allah. When it comes to foul speech, he stays away from it. He doesn't mention any kind of foul words. When it comes to listening to something that he shouldn't be listening to, he stays away from it. The haram, he totally stays away from it. This is true fasting. About this, the Prophet ﷺ, there's various different ahadith. We're not going to mention them in full because of time. The Prophet ﷺ says, Hadith of Bukhari, Whosoever does not abandon falsehood in speech and action, then Allah the Mighty and Majestic has no need that he should leave his food and drink. So in that hadith, we had false speech, acting upon that false speech. And in another riwayah, you have acting indecently, shouting, screaming. In another hadith, we have... Perhaps a person who is fasting, the only thing he gets from his fasting is hunger and thirst. And the only thing he gets from his standing in prayer at night is that he becomes tired and he stays up at night, late at night. So he loses sleep. That's the only thing he gets. The riwayah of Hakim and others. 